What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how to install and configure a FTP server in Linux. Okay, as I said in the intro of the video, I wanted to do a quick video just showing you guys how to set up a FTP server in Linux. And the distribution I want to use for this demonstration is Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, I know FTP is kind of outdated a little bit, but it's still relevant. You still can use it for different things. And if you, in case you don't know what FTP means, it's file transfer protocol. It's basically a protocol uh, that allows you to transfer files uh, over the web. And you can set up a server to actually manage this. Uh, and the way you transfer files, you basically can upload and download files from the FTP server. And it's a way to kind of share files. Uh, and you can actually access those files from the terminal as well as the web. So I want to go down and walk through how to actually set this up and demonstrate how it works. So let's get started. Okay, cool. So I have the terminal up uh, and... I already have a virtual machine spun up. It's a Ubuntu 20.04 server, and this is where I'll be setting up the FTP server from here. Now, let me go down and SSH into the server right fast, uh, just to make it simple. Uh, but SSH uh, 192.168.10.123. I already know what the IP address is, so I will just log into it. Type in my passwords. Okay, and the first thing you want to do is update the system. And I'm sure this system is updated, so I'm going to still run it anyway, just for good practice. So sudo apps updates and press enter. I know it's updated, but like I said, I just want to go down and run the command just to verify and make sure it refresh the packages and all that stuff. So as you can see uh the system is up to date so first thing let's go down and install ftp and actually the package is vs ftpd and this is the server version of ftp so let's type that in now let's go sudo apt install vs ftpd and press enter and then it'll install the ftp server along with ssl cert uh, which is another package that's that's needed uh, so you can install a cert on the server it actually comes with one uh, like a local cert that it'll create uh, within a directory on the server so I just wanted to point that out for you guys but let's press Y to continue let's wait for this thing to finish it shouldn't take too long this is a fairly small application you know what I'm saying this easy to use you know what i'm saying it's very easy to set up and use and i'll show you guys you know once we get it up okay cool so we're complete with the installation one thing with uh most debian packages uh it'll start the service right away so first thing you want to do is kind of check and make sure the service is stored it for ftp so let's type in the command it's basically sudo uh system ctl uh status and then vsft and we'll tab and press enter and this will let you know if it's enabled as well as stored it so as you can see it's active and running that means it's stored it and then right here you can see that it's enabled so the service has actually been enabled so when you restart the, the server uh the service will store it up you know on boot so once this you know server comes up and boots boots in and and comes up you know what i'm saying it'll store that service now that we verify that the service is running uh the next thing you want to do is a go down and configure the server so let me go down and show you guys how to do that and it's a configuration file located under etc that you have to modify in order to get the server up and running so first thing you want to do is type sudo copy and that's one thing i like to do 
and I forgot to say that, but whenever you're messing with configuration files, and I've said this in plenty of other videos, uh, whenever you're messing with configuration files, especially on a server, you want to make sure you have a copy of the original configuration file. That way, if you mess up the configuration, let's say you mess it up and you can't get into the system or whatever, you can copy. Uh, if you, like if you go into a rescue or something, you can copy the right configuration file back over, and the service will actually store it up on boot or whatever. For whatever reason, you can go and get that original copy and put it back in the location that it needs to go. So, sudo copy or c cp. Uh, then the etc directory type that in and then bsftp.config and I want to copy that to the exact same location or the exact same directory so I'm gonna tab it out again but I'm gonna add some to the end of it so vsftp and then what I always do some people use different different methods they'll put like uh, uh, like old or new or some something like on the end of it. I always put BCK So BCK for backup and then press enter and That'll save a copy of the configuration file So if you ever need to revert back to that it's there and you can pull it back or overwrite what's there with the Original configuration file. So now that we have a copy of it. Let's go on and uh, get in and configure FTP. So let's go sudo nano and then that same file etc and then vs FTP and press enter. And it's only a few things we have to modify in here uh, just to make it kind of quick. You you really don't don't need much, but I want to talk about a few things that are in here. Uh, so the first thing you want really want to change is where it says listen. Uh, you want to make sure that's on yes so let's type yes that way the server is actually listening and then another thing uh, I don't use IP version 6 on my network so I just basically turn that off and you can leave it on if you want to that's up to you but I typically turn it off I don't use IP version 6 on anything in my on my network so I just always turn it off. There's no reason to listen on IP version six if it's not gonna get any requests from that protocol. Now, the next thing I wanted to kind of talk about was the allow anonymous. Now, some people do this. Uh, I would recommend you doing this unless you know what you're doing uh, because you will be opening up your FTP server to anyone that has access to the internet if that server is on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So anybody can anonymously connect to your FTP server and copy stuff. And let's say you have rights enabled, which I'm going to show you that config in a second. But if you have write enabled, that means anonymous people can upload things to your server. And if you think about that, that's really not a good idea. That's very dangerous because there are people out there that have, you know, illegal stuff. Uh, and if somebody uploads that to your server uh, without your knowledge, it doesn't matter if you don't know it's the, you didn't know it was there. Uh, it's on your property. So if you get caught with it, then, you know, it's going to fall on you. So you want to make sure you are very careful with the anonymous, you know, connections. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody could put anything on the server and you're ultimately responsible for what's on that server at the end of the day yeah you can show them log files but uh ignorance of the law you know what i'm saying that won't fly you know none of that will actually fly because it's actually on your server that you possess you know what i'm saying so just be very careful with that but by default it's disabled so uh it's no reason to actually touch that now the next thing you want to check is if uh local enabled uh you want to make that yes if it's not or uncommon are uncommon it that allows local connections to the server and then the next thing you want to do is uncomment the write enable which I mean that's only if you want to have write permissions to the server so anyone that connects can actually write to the server and since we don't have anonymous turned on uh, that's only people that we authorize to you know get on the server or someone that has a, a user or account on the server 
uh, can write to the server. So I'll just go on and enable it for this demonstration though. But that's one thing you want to check as well, you know, just seeing if write is enabled. And then that's pretty much it in order to set up the FTP server. I mean, it was only like a few uh, things in the configuration. Now you can go even deeper, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to go too far, but you know, they have it to where you can set up the, or enable the cert. Uh, but that, you know, one thing it, it recommends you change that cert to your own cert or generate a cert, uh, a SSL cert for the server and just put it on there. But there it is right there. Uh, if you could tell where it says um, this option specify the location of RSA certificate uh, to use for SSL encrypted connections. So that creates an encrypted connection. You know, you can go down and use that. Uh, but I recommend you, you know, kind of create your own key um, because this is generated when during the installation. But that's all we need to set up this this server. So let's go down and uh, save this configuration file by typing Control X, and then uh, we're gonna use type Y for yes, and that's gonna save the changes that we made to the file. Okay, cool. So now that that's done, the first thing you want to do once you Whenever you make changes to any type of configuration file, you have to restart the service for that actual application that you're setting up. Otherwise, the configuration files won't be recognized. So let's go down and do that right fast. So the way you, you know, restart the service is simply sudo uh, system ctl. And then we can just type restart. And then let's go down and right type feet bs ftp d and tab it out press enter and that'll restart the service for ftp now the next thing i want to do is actually create another account uh just to use for ftp and that's only for this demonstration so i'm gonna go down and create an account let's type sudo uh user add and then i'm gonna use dash m uh and john we'll just create a user john shouldn't take too long to create this and then let's go down and create a password as well so let's type sudo uh, p-a-s-s-w-d and john and press enter and then this will actually for your password so i'm gonna give it a simple password press enter type in it type it in again set that password and now we get to go so now we have a user account john and we have the ftp server up and running so let's go on and connect to the server. And that's why I have another tab open right here. And this is on my local system right here. This is uh, that connection to the server, that SSH connection to the server. And then this is, you know, my local system. Now let's go on and FTP to this server. And the command to do it is simply FTP. Uh, it's kind of like SSH, you know, FTP and then an IP address. So let's type that in 192.168.10.123, press enter. And what it's gonna do is ask you for your user name. So we already know what that name is. It's John, press enter, type in our password for that account and press enter, boom. And what it'll say is, you know, login successful. A remote system type is Unix uh, using binary mode to transfer files cool and I won't go through how to actually you know copy files move files all that good stuff uh, I just want to mainly focus in on setting up the server itself uh, but in case you didn't know you could type the question mark here and press enter and that'll give you all the commands you can actually run within FTP once you have it set up, you know, properly. Uh, you can, you know, delete files. You can, you know, move files up. Um, you can copy things down, you know what I'm saying? And create directories, remove directories. You know, pretty much it's a slew of commands you could go through and actually do once you're actually logged into the FTP server. But let me show you another way to actually connect to the server. So. And I always like to use this example because this is something that I've done in real life. Let's say I needed to share something with somebody like real quick. Then the easiest way is to just set up an FTP server and create a 
username and password for them and it's simply easy for them to go to their browser most people use windows you know what i'm saying windows operating system so all they have to do is or whatever they have a chromebook whatever you can go to a web browser and connect to the ftp server and let me go down and show you guys how to how to do that right fast okay cool so i got my browser up man let me go down and show you guys how to actually connect to this server so simply all you have to do is type in ftp uh colon forward slash forward slash and i already have the ip address in uh it's one two three uh so let's press enter it'll ask you for your username and password it's kind of slow on my network but whatever uh username john then type in that password boom and sign in and we are on the ftp server so we like for that example that I gave, you know what I'm saying? Let's say you need to quickly share something with someone. Um, I mean, yeah, you can send an email, you know, but let's say it's like a 20 gig, I don't know, um, documents that are encrypted. And the only reason I say encrypted, you wanna make sure something is encrypted because the FTP is not secure. That's why it has that SSL option in there that you can en enable within the configuration because FTP is really unsecure. If you want to be secure, it's best to use SFTP or SSH, you know, some type of way. But uh, let's say you want to share a huge document with somebody and you it won't go through email. Then you can set up that FTP server, upload that document to your server, and then share the IP address with whoever you're trying to send something to. They can download that file. The only thing is with FTP is clear text. So just be warned. Just make sure you like encrypt it or something uh, before you put it up there. And the person you're sending it to has the keys to unlock it and everything. So uh, they can decrypt it on their end. But everything over FTP, plain FTP is plain uh, text. So anybody can snoop and get a copy of whatever you're you're sending over the network but that's pretty much how you set up a ftp server uh i might do a video on just showing people how to actually run some commands in the command line using ftp like the commands that you can actually use against the ftp server uh as the client so stay tuned for that or whatever but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel um if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it taking